Hi, and welcome to what you need to know about Open Metrics. I couldn't talk about Open Metrics without also talking about Prometheus a little bit. I don't think I have to convince anyone who's attending a CNCF event that there's this time before Prometheus and the time after Prometheus. So let's look at the time before Prometheus for a second. Historically, the closest thing we had to a standard for metrics transmission and other type of telemetry transmission was SNMP. Many solutions like SNMP are based on ancient technology, for example, ASN1. TLS is also based on ASN1. And while ASN1 was great in the 70s, as of today, it's just a huge pain to implement and a tremendous security liability. If you ever look into the details, it just becomes worse and worse and worse. It's ingenious for its time, but it's really bad today, just because of implementation complexity and the trade-offs which, which were forced upon people like 50 years ago. Um, many of those uh, older standards are chatty and slow, or at least often. Many of those data formats are propriety or hard to implement or even both. A lot of the data models encourage per vendor variations, which might follow the letter of the law, but definitely not the spirit of the law. In particular, in the older internet things like networking and such, you can see this again and again and again, where vendors go as near to being not in spec as they possibly can, and just going to the absolute maximum of, of what they can do to push their own thing or make their own thing more successful, and maybe create a little bit of lock-in. Um, which is just historic baggage at this point. And pretty much all of those older solutions tended to have hierarchical data models, which again was maybe fine for, for back then, but as of today, that's not really good anymore with, with the high scale and complexity of pretty much even smaller, smaller deployments. Um, if you have your region, you have your data center, you have your customer, you have your whatever, and then you need to select by customer. All of a sudden, you need to reshuffle your tree or you need to walk up, go over, need to go down. And like you can do all of this. It's not exactly hard, but it's just overhead, which is not nice. Looking at the time after Prometheus. By now, Prometheus is the de facto standard in cloud, net cloud native metric monitoring and way beyond. Produ production industries, industry 4.0, IoT, <sighs> electrical power networks, uh, ISPs, it's, it's way beyond just the cloud native space. And by extension, the same is true for the Prometheus exposition format. The ease of exposing this type of data by hand, like even by hand, has led to an absolute explosion in compatible endpoints. We have thousands and thousands of exporters and in, in, in integrations. By our own count, we have hundreds of thousands of installations and millions of users. Making the problem even worse, um, we have standard exporters for pretty much everything, and we have libraries which are for pretty much all the languages. And here the we is with my Prometheus team hat on. I'm switching over in a second. Um, we, as in Prometheus, even have an exporter scaffold, which makes it super easy to just write new exporters so you can focus on the metrics and what actually adds business value instead of focusing on writing yet another HTTP endpoint. And again, I probably don't have to convince anyone who is using Kubernetes or Prometheus that label sets are the way you want to use to, to access your data. Of course, it's just so much more powerful than hierarchical data models. As usual, when you have success, uh, there's also politics involved. Um, some vendors were, let's call it, torn about adopting things which, which are from a competing product or project, which literally have the name in Prometheus exposition format. Especially the more traditional vendors or the super large companies prefer to support official standards just for level setting and everyone playing equally, ideally. And we wanted to not lose the installed base of Prometheus for obvious reasons. We wanted to retain that ease of adoption. We wanted to make upgrading basically invisible to, to pretty much all the users. We also wanted to reject this kitchen sink approach where you have to support every single last use case which you can possibly conceive. Um, and by, by this basically dilute and, and overburden your standard, your implementation, your what have you. On Quite on purpose, we decided to do one thing, do it well, and remain focused and opinionated about how to do metrics-based monitoring right. 
a lot of competing companies have helped shape what has become open metrics today. And the result is an actually neutral standards, uh, standard, which takes pretty much everyone's who, who spoke up uh, concerns into account. There's thousands and dozens of people and companies who helped us get there. Um, we have a few marathon runners, um, Ben Kochi, Brian Brazil, myself, Rob Skillington, and honorable mention, Samir Bola, um, who until relatively recently um, drove, drove the standard forward. So that's nice, all of this. And, and that's like the history. But what does this mean for you, for the user? Well, I alluded to this already. The format is largely the same as the Prometheus Exposition format on purpose. It has cleanups and new features, and we'll see that in a bit. But on purpose, it is largely the same thing, just carefully evolved. If you're using the Python client integration, or uh, even quite old Prometheus from 2018, or Go or Java uh, client libraries, any of the official exporters, you already have open metrics running in your system. Of course, for quite some time, um, Prometheus already negotiates uh, open metrics, like literally for years. But this happened in the background, st still while we were finalizing um, the standard and everything without impacting any end users. Most of you might be surprised right now that you're actually already using open metrics at scale. Um, but that's a distinct design goal of what we did. We didn't want you to be forced to re uh, reimplement against a new API every three weeks or six months or something. To just keep working and be largely invisible. Because frankly, you care about so much about the details of how open metrics evolved and how it be and how the Prometheus internal works. You want to have your stuff work and you don't want it to break. You don't want this to be a burden. It just just work in the background without being yet another headache, which, which you have to take care of. That being said, we have breaking changes, but they're very, very few. You can see the complete list on the screen. Um, counters require underscore total in the time series name. Um, it's already a common convention. It's part. It's had, it has been part of our naming scheme and on, or of our recommendations. Again, we with the Prometheus hat on um, for basically years. I think even before Prometheus joined CNCF or before CNCF was even founded, we already had that in as a as a convention. Um, but now it's actually enforced. So, for example, if your metric used to be called CPU seconds, um, it will automatically uh, be renamed to CPU uh, seconds total, which is not a huge change, but you need to be aware of this. And we consider it breaking. Ideally, your, your counters all end in underscore total anyway. Timestamps are in seconds, not in milliseconds anymore. Um, and that's just for consistency. We use SI base units everywhere else in Prometheus. And so we just wanted to have the same thing at that one specific place. Um, of course, by extension, obviously, uh, in open metrics, you use SI base, base units wherever possible. And while you could always expose an explicit timestamp, it's usually an anti-pattern anti unless you are in super well-defined uh, circumstances which means that by and large, even though we explicitly mark those things as breaking changes, most anyone will not even be aware of them if they, that they are breaking. Um, of course, anyone using standard Prometheus uh, stuff won't be impacted. It's already happened in the background or you never even use those, those bits and pieces on purpose. We also have improvements for interoperability and general cleanup. We tightened up a few specs uh, or bits of the specification, so a little bit of spacing, escaping, and such to just make the parser easier to write and thus make parsing quicker and easier because obviously you run quite a lot of scrapes in, in any given environment. And so being able to, to just improve the parser is going to or has led to quite impressive um, overall like at scale improvements in, in scrape time. We mandate uh, an EUF at the end of scrapes or at, at the end of expositions. Of course, formally, you couldn't be certain if you actually had a complete scrape or not. You could deduce it, but you couldn't be certain. Um, we allow for nanosecond resolution timestamps. Like if you do high frequency trading or something, um, then you would probably need this kind of thing. Um, we allow for 64-bit integers, not just floats. 
There's new metadata unit, which tells you what base unit that counter or that, that metric is in. Underscore created for when uh, metrics were created and reset, which allows some, some deductions for, for certain rates and such. Um, we extended open metrics for considerations for push and for pull. And in the consideration section of open metrics, you can find quite some, some text about how, if you need to do push, you can do this in a compatible way with Prometheus. You lose certain properties of how Prometheus operates and what Prometheus assumes to be there. Because while, I mean, push and pull is largely religious, to be honest. Yet, uh, pull has a few nice properties which you cannot easily or not at all emulate with pull, uh, sorry, with push, unless you maintain state in the middle, basically, like staleness, uh, upness in Prometheus. Those two things are really hard to, to rebuild in a purely push system. It leads to sometimes even, or commonly, you even needing to replicate parts of service discovery in your scraping layer. Um, or in your metrics pipeline layer to, to be able to have a status of upness, of liveness, of, or staleness of your metrics. Just something to be aware of. Yet, we have all those considerations in, and open metrics explicitly supports push. Of course, that's something which, which users wanted, and so we support it. Prometheus doesn't uh, support push open metrics. Um, the text format is still mandatory to have a baseline where you know that things are working. And also it means that the debuggability is, is really easy. Of course, you can always just connect with a web browser and start reading stuff if you need it. Um, but we reintroduced protobuf um, for the people who like it. Like for Prometheus itself, we text format is has even been quicker than protobuf uh, under, under high load. But there are scenarios for people prefer Prolo, and that's completely fine. Something which is completely new is exemplars. Exemplars is, if you haven't heard of them, they're absolutely ingenious. Basically, they allow you to attach information about traces to your logs and to your metrics. In this case, obviously, I'm focused on the metrics, but it's also for your logs. Because usually in traces, you have this needle and haystack problem. You need to go into a, into a trace. Uh, but you don't know if it's actually relevant. So you need to search through all the stuff which is attached on the traces or to the traces to find things which match certain properties. As opposed to if you already have your high latency bucket or your error state in, in your logs or what have you, and you have an exemplar attached to it, you know what trace, what span you need to jump to, and you can simply... Uh, you can simply go directly to a trace or a span. You retain all the mental context of, hey, why is this relevant to me, while delving into, into the actual trace, as opposed to basically needing to start at zero after searching for your needle and haystack. Exemplars are already widely supported. Prometheus, Cortex, Thanos, Loki, Grafana, um, others. There's tons of software which already works with exemplars. And from what... I can see um, others are also adapting this concept because it's just insanely powerful. Current state in Prometheus. Um, the Prometheus client library is the reference implementation, uses open metrics data model internally 100%, blah, 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 has done this for years. So if you if you want to look at open metrics, like the dirty details or the a reference implementation, look at, at the Python client. Again, on purpose, of course, Python tends to be easy to reach, is used for teaching and such. So we chose this as the reference implementation. Go and Java also support it. So um, that's basically most of the Prometheus ecosystem right there already. Prometheus will preferentially negotiate open metrics and has done so for years. So again, you are most likely already using it without being aware. Info and enums are first class features in Prometheus. Um, so you don't need to implement stuff. Um, you don't need to uh, need to implement them uh, by hand in your in your client libraries. You actually have the support in your client libraries. You don't need to do this by hand. Um, and if you scrape uh, through the um, Prometheus exposition format, like you actively negotiate this, it's exposed in a backwards compatible manner, which is nice. Other implementations, um, Datadog supports ingestion of open metrics, has been for quite some time. Um, they even contributed performance improvements to the Python parser. Thank you. Um, OpenTelemetry supports open metrics as a first-class wire format. 
and open metrics is part of the Prometheus conformance program. And that part is important. So now I'm going to put on my Prometheus hat again. The Prometheus conformance program officially launched or launches, depending on when this is published, <laughs> on October 14. Because uh, that's when the Prometheus conformance program talk, uh, also by me, is, is going to be published. Um, so we have several test suites which test for Prometheus interfaces in the Prometheus org. And anyone, any vendor, any project, any product which wants to get an official Prometheus compatible mark needs to, to be compliant to all the interfaces which we define as relevant for that thing. So if you're scraping data, you need to be 100% open metrics compliant to be uh, to be able to get the Prometheus compatible mark. There's other stuff like you need to sign contracts with CNCF or rather Linux Foundation, um, but you get a nice logo, blah, 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 blah. More details on this in my other talk. How can you spot open metrics? Well, it's it's a little bit more verbose basically, and also there's a few a few telltale signs. Prometheus exposition format 004. Let's say you have a counter. That counter looks as such. Foo seconds total, 1.0, that's it. For open metrics, you can see that we also have a unit metadata, which tells you that foo seconds is um, in seconds. You can also see that uh, the type is now not foo seconds total anymore. The type and the unit is foo seconds. Of course, by definition, as it is a counter, you get the underscore total attached to the value by um, if you're using one of the client libraries automatically, else you have to do it by hand. Um, and you can also see that you have underscore created for whatever time. Um, I, I think I put a joke in there, but I forgot, honestly. You can revert it and see what, what joke I made back then. Um, it's also in the official spec, of course, obvious. Um, yeah, but anyway, you see that that the name of the metrics is now without that tail, without the suffix um, for consistency reasons for the internal data models. Um, if you're not using the Prometheus client libraries, then um, you need to do stuff by hand. It's relatively easy. You add underscore total for your counters. Um, even if you're using the uh, client libraries um, and you don't do this now, just add it. And um, if, if you're using the client libraries, um, you will not see, I mean, in neither case will you actually see a change. Just add it and either the Prometheus client libraries will do it for you um, once you upgrade or you do it by hand and either way you will not see an impact. Um, if you write stuff yourself, uh, like by hand, please send the correct content type. Um, both if you want to explicitly do Prometheus uh, Exposition Format 004 or if you want to do Open Metrics 1.0. Either is fine, but um, please make sure that you that you explicitly um, set the content type correctly. And if you write scrapers or ingesters, um, please set your accept headers to negotiate Prometheus or Open Metrics format, depending on, on which you prefer and how far you are in your own story of, of adoption. Um, my recommendation or our recommendation, and that's with both hats on, um, would obviously be open metrics because um, that's the future. There's more resources. We have the Git repo for open metrics. We have the compliance suite for um, Prometheus. We have the part of the open uh, of the Prometheus compliance suite, which is uh, living in the open metrics uh, repository. And that's it. I hope you have plenty of questions for me. Thank you very much.